All right, finally, Samsung has started rolling out the One UI 5.0 based on Android 13 for the Note 20 series. A few days ago, it started rolling out in some of the regions and in my region, I had just received the update and it's quite exciting. So I thought I will share it with you guys. As you can see, the size of this update is about 2 GB, which is expected. And the security patch level is for 1st October 2022, though we are already in November. Perhaps we will get this November security patch in a couple of weeks. Now, coming back to this update, you can see the huge change log here. We have got more or less all the features that we got on the S22 series. I don't see any missing features here. However, if I see or if I notice anything in the future, I will come back to you guys and let you know any features which are dropped for this particular device. Now, what I request you guys to do is let me know in the comment section whether you have received this update on your Note 20 series or your S20 series. Drop a comment and mention from which country you are commenting. That is going to help the community to understand in which countries the update has already arrived. So be sure to drop a comment. Now in this video, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the important features or changes that we have got on this device. Because I have already made detailed videos on each and every features that we have received on this iteration of One UI. So if you have missed those videos, you can go ahead and check them out. I will leave all the links in the description as well. And you can check the channel. And while you do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel to know your phone better. Now the first change is the visual design that we have. Uh, we have got some new app icons, which offers larger and bolder look. The color palette theming has been improved. We can see this application of color palettes in more or less all the parts of the UI. Even on the settings menu, we can see the color palettes theming is much more pronounced now. The animations are pretty good. It is snappier than before and it is pretty smooth as well. I did notice some stutters here and there though, uh, but I think in the future updates, we should get a fix for them. Overall, the animations are pretty good. The background blur effects on the quick panel and home screen has been improved. They look much more refined now. And now coming to the customization, uh, we have got this lock screen customization feature. We can just press and hold on the lock screen to get to the lock screen editing menu and we can select the wallpaper we want here we can change the clock we can change the font and colors for the clock as well as the size and we can also set some of the shortcuts by tapping on these icons at the bottom and while editing we get to see more wallpaper options as well there are a bunch of new samsung wallpapers we can select dynamic wallpapers we can see featured wallpapers and all the downloaded wallpapers will be available right here to customize your lock screen. Coming to the color palettes, now we have 16 color themes based on the wallpaper and we also get preset color themes that are designed to look amazing. Next, let's go to the settings. As you can see, the menu options have changed here. We've got connections and then we've got connected devices. When I tap on this, we get to see all the connected devices right here. So it is much more streamlined now. And then we have got this modes and routines option. Earlier it used to be called as Bixby routines. Now it is called modes and routines. We have got a bunch of modes available right here, which can be customized. And we have got these routines, which you can create in this particular menu. And now it is easier to see the running routine right here on the top. Earlier it was difficult to know which routine is running. Now when you open modes and routines, you will be able to see the running routine right here on the top. Then coming to the widgets, we have got all new stack widgets now on the home screen, which can be set. We can combine several different widgets on the same widget so that you can make the home screen clutter free. This is going to save a lot of space on your home screen. You can set multiple widgets on a single widget and you can just swipe to see those widgets in one single place. Just press and hold on the widget to create a stack and you can just add all the widgets that you need. Then we have a brand new widget called Smart Suggestions. This widget is going to suggest the applications and actions based on how you use your phone. Basically, we get a quick access to all the recently used applications or actions. Next important feature is the multitasking. Uh, you will have to go to the settings and go to labs. To see a couple of new toggles here, you can see we have got swipe for pop-up view and swipe for split screen view. Now let's say if you want to open an application in pop-up view, all you can do is just swipe down from the top right or the top left corner, the application will get into a pop-up view. And if you want to open an application in split screen view, just use your two fingers to swipe up from the bottom to open the application in the split screen view and you can add the other application to the second screen here. This is a fantastic feature which has been added on One UI. In the camera section, there is some improvements. We can now use telephoto lens for food mode. Histogram in pro mode has been added. And we also have an option to add watermarks to the pictures that you take. You can just go to the settings and enable add watermark feature right here. And we can also customize the way you want the watermark to appear on the pictures. Now coming to the gallery, if you open the gallery and go to settings, you will see an all new option here called select albums to show. We can choose which albums to show on the albums tab instead of showing all of them. So you can just filter out the albums 
that you want to be shown when you open the gallery. Once you enable that feature, you can just tap on this three dot button. You will see an option here, select albums to show. Just tap on that and then you can select the albums right here. Now here in gallery, if you have already enabled gallery labs, you can just open that to see an all new feature called album entry locks. Just enable this toggle, go to gallery and press and hold on any albums. Tap on the three dot button, you will see this all new option called lock album. This feature enables us to lock the album just in case if you want. Now this is not a foolproof locking mechanism, so be wary of that. The images may be accessible on the files application or any other application as well. On Samsung's keyboard, there are some changes and some new features. Now we have got new emojis for emoji pairs. More than 80 additional emojis are available for creating an emoji pair now on the keyboard. We can also rearrange expression buttons in Samsung keyboard. We can just touch and hold on the emoji stickers or any other buttons to move them around to rearrange them. The next important feature is extracting the text from an image. If you have any image containing text in your gallery, when you open it, you will see this T icon right here at the bottom right corner. When you tap on that, the AI is going to recognize all the text which is available on the image and you'll be able to tap on the text to see a few options such as copy, select all, share. If you want to copy the text and paste it on any applications or send it to somebody, you can do that. So this is a very handy feature we have got now on oneui 5.0. It also gives us some suggestions based on the text. Let's say if you have an email ID or let's say if you have a phone number, we will be able to tap on that directly to call or to send an email. That's a nice addition. And then we have got Samsung DeX. There are some enhancement in Samsung DeX as well. We have got an enhanced taskbar with a search button, which makes it easier to find the applications you want to use on the DeX. And we've got new notification indicator for DeX. A red dot will appear on the notification button in the taskbar if a new notification have been received. Then we have a mini calendar also in DeX mode. Now coming to the notification features, we can get only the notifications which we allow whenever we install a new application. It is going to ask your permission to allow the notification or not. So instantly you will be able to enable or disable the notifications for a particular application. Okay, now the next feature is setting language for each application. If you want to use some application applications in a different language, you can now choose which language will be used for that particular application in the settings. Then we have got more options for RAM plus. You can open the settings, tap on battery and device care, tap on memory. At the bottom, you will see RAM plus. When you tap on this, you will see a toggle now to enable or disable RAM plus. So if you don't need it, you can disable RAM plus. I have read some of you guys mentioning that when you disable the RAM plus, the phone runs much smoother. I have not tried it though, but yeah, you can try this now with this all new toggle. Now coming to security and privacy, we have got an all new menu option now. As you can see, when you go to settings, you will see security and privacy tab. This new security dashboard in settings shows whether your phone has any security issues and helps you fix them quickly by showing you a notification right there. Apart from these, we do have some other features like more control over calendar and event invitees. Use several timers at once on the clock application. We can add stickers to Google Calendar, add video conferences to your events, more powerful search in My Files application, all new redesigned digital well-being feature, and we can also see apps App names in the edge panel. These are some of the additional features that we have got. Now, if you want to see more detailed videos on all these features, then you should check out the channel. I have made a bunch of videos about all the features on OneUI 5.0. Now, as soon as I installed this update, I did open GoodLock application and I could see the updates for all the modules to activate them. And uh, we also have Registar module, which is fantastic. I have made a dedicated video on this particular module. You can go ahead and check that. I've explained what exactly this does. Unfortunately, the back tap action is not working very well. It's always a hit and miss, which is a bummer, at least for now. Dropship module is still missing. I think it's only available in Korea and I hope to see that module very soon in all the other regions. And then the camera assistant module, I am still not able to see. Probably I'll have to install it from an external link. I'm not very sure why is it not showing up. I hope they are not going to skip that module for the S20 or Note 20 series. If you guys have already got it, do let me know in the comment section. That's about it. That's all I want to share with you guys. Uh, it seems that the phone is running smoothly. I have not encountered any issues so far. It's been just a few hours since I updated the phone. I will come back to you if I notice any issues or any features which are not made available on this device. Now, if you want a battery test results, do let me know in the comment section. I will do a real life battery test and share the battery test results the screen on time with you guys. So go ahead and drop a comment and be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's all I want to share with you guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Salian signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.